Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls, and welcome back to the fourth and final week of the Making Your Home a Haven Bible Study titled Slowing Down for Spiritual Growth. Now this week we are going to talk about how to live a life of celebration, and I just hope and pray that this has been a rewarding four weeks for you because what I want you to see is that joy comes through practicing the spiritual disciplines of being silent and still, of studying God's word and prayer. And this centers us. This connects us with our creator and that is when we can live loved because when he has filled us with his love, it doesn't matter who has rejected us, who has hurt us. We come from a place of knowing that we are loved and we can live loved and we can pour that love out, right, on to others. You see, we can't have joy when we are worried and when we are stressed and we are full of fears. But when we are still, that is when we can hand over our worries and hand over our stress and hand over our fears to the Lord and we can rest and we can release it to Him. And that is when our hearts are lighter and we are free to rejoice and we are free to celebrate the good things in life, even in the midst of hard times. You see, living a life of joy does not happen automatically. We have to be intentional to live a life that is thankful and grateful to God for the good things that he has given us. You know, of all the people in the world, we should be the most free and the most alive. And so Christians are not meant to be these stuffy, judgmental rule followers. Those are the worst kind of Christians to be around, right? We have been set free from sin and condemnation and we are loved and we must live like it. We are free to laugh, free to enjoy life. And this does not mean that we want to practice simple things in order to enjoy life, no. But it does mean that we have perspective, that no matter if we're rich or poor, sick or healthy, or in good times or in bad, that we can marvel at the goodness of God and the glory of God in our lives and celebrate our salvation. So. How do we do this? How do we practically live a life of celebration? First, live a life in community. Go out for coffee and dessert or dinner with friends or have people into your home where you can enjoy time around the table connecting with others. That always makes life fuller as we live a life of love. Secondly, sing to the Lord. Psalm 150, uh, David is talking and he says, praise the Lord. Listen to this psalm. He says, Pray, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Look at how much fun they're having. They are dancing, they are singing, they are making music. I'm not overly musical. I do know how to play piano, but not very well. Um, but if you are musical, make music to the Lord. Or crank up the music in your kitchen, you know, on your Spotify list or your iTunes, and have a dance party. Enjoy, enjoy life and the good things he has given us. Another way that we can celebrate life and enjoy it is to laugh. Proverbs, 20, uh, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. You know, be willing to laugh at yourself. I am like pretty much the bunt of most of the jokes in my home since I have two teenagers. And it's kind of funny because my son, he does. He finds like these weird idiosyncrasies that I have and he points them out. And it is funny when he points them out and we all get a good laugh at some of my goofiness. And um, my son will even do that sometimes to my daughter. And as she's been growing up, she really hasn't enjoyed that. She doesn't like to be made fun of. But as she's gotten older, I think she started to appreciate his sense of humor and she's starting to be able to laugh at herself too. And so it's okay to not, don't take yourself too seriously. Um, in the same way, play games in your home and, and don't take the game too seriously, right? Because that can lead to a lot of laughter and fun. If you are creative, which I am not overly creative, be creative, make things, bake together, make a craft, uh, you know, paint something, make music. 
Enjoy the holidays. Here comes the holidays. Enjoy Thanksgiving and Christmas and birthdays and anniversaries throughout the year. Make them interesting and make them fun for you and for your family. You know, Edith Schaefer says, we are an environment, each one of us. She says, we're an environment for the other people with whom we live, the people with whom we work, the people with whom we communicate, our conversations, our attitudes, our behavior, our response or lack of response, our hardness or compassion, our love or selfishness, our joy or dullness, concern for others or self-pity, all these things make a difference to the people who, uh, who have to live in our environment. Have you considered that you are an environment and that what type of environment are you? Are you warm? Are you cheery? Are you loving and calm and quiet? Or are you angry and irritable and impatient and ticked off? What type of environment are you in your home for the others that are around you? You know, life is not is certainly not always butterflies and roses, but because we are Christians, we are to reflect Christ in our environment and in our homes. And that is part of why we have this Making Your Home a Haven series, right? Because as we light our candles and play our music and have our bouquet of flowers and these different things, it helps us, right? As we connect with our creator and we um, create overflow with the love of God and that stillness and that calmness that we can bring to others who are inside our home too. So that brings us to our final week. I want you to see that the heart of slowing down and being silent and studying in prayer, that that will help us to overflow with joy, overflow with peace, and overflow with celebration. Because all of these spiritual disciplines will see us through the hard days and the dark times because they will come. It is inevitable. But these disciplines of being in God's word will carry us through. And on days when it's super hard, and you, you just need a break, I want to encourage you to just go close the door to your bathroom and take a bubble bath for 20 minutes and just center yourself and just be alone with God or drink a cup of hot cocoa or turn on some music in your kitchen and, and have a dance party. Celebrate your friendships. Celebrate the food, the good food that God has given you and whatever else is good in your life. Give thanks to God because he loves you so much. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. He is worthy and keep walking with the King.